how's it going and today I'm going to give you a very quick and dirty look at the sequencer, the take recorder, and the movie render view in the film, video, and events basic template. So this is kind of where I'm at right now and I'm just going to go ahead and make a new project. And like I said, it's film, video, and live events, the blank. And we're just going to go ahead and go create. And I'm not going to save anything from my previous project. It wants to activate a lot of VR stuff when it logs on. So one of the things you need to know is that when you go into the film, video, and live events template is that it takes a while for everything to load up and all the shaders to build. So just be mindful of that. When you choose that template, it's gonna, it might take 10, 15 minutes for all the shaders to compile. I know on my system it takes a while and I don't know, I haven't timed it, but even after I've done it a few times, it might take five minutes or something like that. And I have like an i9 processor with a 32 gigabyte RAM and I forget which uh, Nvidia card I have, but it's a good one, it's an RTX one. And it takes a long time even with all that, so. But one of the advantages of using the film and video template is that it comes with all the plugins you need already in it. And so that's a time saver here, but I think you lose the time you save on that on this. So I don't know advantage of this. So it looks like going into the future that eventually all we're going to have is the movie render queue. And the sequencer and tech recorder seem to be an integral part of the system now. And so that's another thing that's loaded in, comes automatically, and is the tech recorder and the sequencer. The thing you might do before you start this project is on your desktop, make sure you have a blank folder because we're going to need that. You're going to need that to render your files into. And so to be completely honest with you, I have found this extremely confusing. And that's the main reason I'm making this tutorial is to hopefully make it clearer how things are working. And a lot of this I figured out simply by trial and error, doing it over and over again and finally figuring things out that way, plus reading documentation. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is set up our scene. So we're gonna go into the content browser, we're gonna add feature, and we're gonna go add third person content here like that. And I'm gonna close this. And then I'm just going to go to characters, mannequins, animations, Quinn, and the idol. And I'm just gonna drag her onto the scene. Now, when I've done this before, she hasn't been added to the sequencer sometime. The last time I just did this, she was ad added to the sequencer, but normally she's not in the sequencer, not automatically added to the sequencer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put her at 90, rotation there, and then we're gonna go ahead and add a city camera here and drag that onto the scene. That comes in at the right orientation, thank goodness. The other thing I like to do is I like to slow down the camera speed to one, and I like to put the snapping at one, just so I have a lot more control over things. And then I end up using these controls to manage the camera. It's easier than trying to grab it over here. So all we're gonna do is just a simple dolly in shot here. Now the other thing that's nice about the this template is it comes with HDRI in it already, so we can drag that in, and that makes a big difference in our background. And then all we got to do is zero it out here. Go zero, 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 and then just drag it up a little bit until it's, uh, I mean, up, I guess. So it's not flickering and it's even on our feet. Okay. So then I think I can come down here, zoom down here a little bit. And that's our basic scene. There's our camera. There's our actor or talent <laughs> and so we're good to go as far as I can tell so the one thing we'll do is we'll go on the camera city camera actor one and I'm gonna just search for aperture here and we're just gonna jack that up to 22 so everything's in focus and I don't have to worry about that okay so now we're set and we can get into the main part of this tutorial which is the sequencer and the tech recorder and the movie render queue so if we click over here on the sequencer, you notice it didn't bring in the, the animation here. 
So sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I have no idea why it does the things it does. So all we have to do is add a camera, the camera. So let's click on the camera here. We're going to go track, add a sequencer, add city camera. And then we get to see what the camera is seeing right now, which is perfectly fine. And all we're going to do is animate the camera to push in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extend our keyframes over here. So I'm just going to type in something like 500. And then if you grab this scroll bar here and stretch it, you can see the whole entire timeline here. So we're going to grab this red marker here, drag it out to about 10 seconds, and then we got to drag the clip and extend it out as well. So now we've got a 10 second clip. She's framed up. Everything looks good so far. So that's fantastic. So all we have to do is hit this here to auto keyframe. We go back on our camera, be aware of these controls. And we're going to hit here to make a keyframe. Then we're going to hit here to go to the end frame. And then on this, we're just going to push in like this. And maybe I'll come up a little bit too at the same time. And that is basically our shot. So if I go back to the beginning and hit play, it should show the movement of the camera. And it's over 10 seconds, so it's going to seem a little slow. So basically, that's our shot all set up. That didn't actually take too long, so that's fantastic. So now what I'm going to show you is where we go from here. Now I want to show you something is notice that where it says City Camera Actor here, it says Pending Take. This is very, very confusing to me because I don't know what they mean. It means there's a pending take, there's a pending take. That means the take recorder is basically ready to go. And it's like, you can think of the take recorder as like this really hyper, like someone on uh, amphetamines or something. It's like they're one step, they're like manic. They're one step ahead of you all the time. So they're like, go, 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 go. I'm ready to go, we're ready to go. And so they're always like, the <laughs> take recorder is always one step ahead and I'm still back on the step we're working on. So anyway, we go on to the take recorder now. And all we have to do to film this, what we've just set up, the animation and everything, is to go to source and go from actor and add our camera. So now it has a source to film with. And you see how it's running already? It's like a car idling. All we have to do is hit this and it'll start recording. So we'll just give it a second and it'll just start taking off. So it's recording our entire clip right now. I want to show you something here that happens in just a second. So it's recorded our entire clip right there, and it's going to keep going until we hit here to stop it. Now I want you to see what it just did. It popped us back into the sequencer, so now we're back kind of where we were. And it says back here to pending take again. So pending take means it's ready to go on to take two already, but we're still working on the clip we just shot. So that's confusing to me that the take recorder seems to have jumped ahead already to want to take take two. We're still trying to figure out what happened to take one. <laughs> so where is take one? Well, we can click here on the content browser, go to the content level. We go into cinematics, it takes, click here, click here, and there it is right there. Now I want to show you something that's really confused the heck out of me. So when we double click on this, keep an eye on what happens over here. So right now it's telling you this is our camera. This is our city camera actor one. It says well, I'm ready to go to the next take already. I'm still, my head's still back at this take we just shot. Watch what happens when we click, double click on this scene here. Now look what happened. Did you see what happened? It's created, there's our cine camera actor, but then it also created, it spawned in another cine camera actor. That thunderbolt means it spawned in. So what it's done is we technically have two cameras. We've got our original camera that we filmed with, which is here. And then we have our camera that's been spawned in to the sequencer. And it's right here. So it's very, very confusing that it did that. So it spawned in a camera, and then we have our original camera here. So it's very interesting. So now if we hit play, we can actually see the take that we just shot play back. So let's say we're satisfied with this and we're happy. Well, how do we render this out? Well, all we have to do is come over here, 
and there is our, our take right here scene one take one and we just click on here where it says unsaved configs and here we don't want to render it out as a JPEG so I can just simply delete that and then just come up here to where it says settings click there and I can select a PNG sequence there and the only other thing I might want to do is let's say go to output double click on it let's say I'd like to render this out at 60 frames per second I was going to say rendering out at 60 frames per second is not a bad idea because if you want to slow the footage down in post you can and if you got more frames than you need they'll just be dropped by your editor so 60 frames per second is not a bad frame rate to render out in. The only other thing is we need a folder to put these sequences in so I got that already on my desktop here folder number three we're going to select that we're going to accept it like terms and conditions go accept and then all we have to do is hit render local and if it's working hopefully we'll see it render out yeah so it, it worked I can't if we had put out anti-aliasing on here and had increased our samples it would actually be rendering eight frames per every frame and you would see that down here and so if you do render with anti-aliasing it really it really increases the rendering time just like any time you increase a quality setting in the samples it's going to increase the rendering time quite a bit actually quite a bit and it is producing frames it's rendering we had 765 frames and we are done so that is fantastic now here's the last part and hopefully this won't be confusing is what if we want to we want to do a whole new scene now we've got our sequencer jammed up with all this spawned in cameras and stuff how do we how do we go back to shoot like another scene and just move on we if we wanted to do another take we could simply do another take but why would we do that we haven't changed anything so how do we how do we move on from here now we've rendered out one clip well all we have to do is come over here and click on this unlock thing see that see how everything's red and now everything's unlocked so now what we have to do is just clear literally clear this junk out because we got to get rid of we've got to get rid of this here this spawned in camera component so that's what we have to do is get rid of it and it's kind of confusing about which one is which right so this is the one that has our transform this one appears to be our sequence here right so this is our one here this is the one we want to delete so we've got to get rid of this so all we have to do is just delete it and you see when we delete it it goes away up here so we just deleted the spawned in actor so now we're back to where we were originally and now we can go back to readjusting the scene reanimating our camera doing whatever and then going over the tech recorder and doing another take so anyway that's all I had for today I hope you found this helpful I didn't mean for this video to take so long but this really is confusing so if you're confused by it you're not alone <laughs> But anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.